This is an example from the grade 7 through 10 mathematics course, topic 1 on identifying shapes. They may now take a test or instruction. Suppose we select instruction. First figures will be triangles with metric measurements shown on the sides. The scalene triangle being in blue, the magenta triangle being isosceles, and the cyan triangle being equilateral. Quadrilaterals have different names. Trapezoids, parallelograms, rhombus, rectangle, and the simple square. Now the student's allowed to take practice problems before they actually begin the assessment phase to see if they have understood all the instruction that they've had previously. If the student says yes, they get up to five problems to practice. I'll select one. The computer creates then a multiple choice question for us. Which of the following figures is a rhombus? I'll select A, which is correct. Now that I've finished my practice problems, the actual test begins. I'll select B, and it flashes to show me that C is the correct answer, B was not. This statistical procedure is used to save the student's time in test taking so that we can stop a test very quickly if the student is not demonstrating mastery and return to instruction. We employ a wide variety of instructional strategies from simple drill and practice which does have some benefit through tutorial instruction, through simulations, through the student actually programming the computer. The CAN-8 system is available on many computers and on several microcomputers. We utilize it on the mini computer version because the work that we do here is in the production and evaluation of materials. If we use the microcomputers for that, it would be very difficult to collect the data on the student performance in the courses so that we would know how to revise the courses. And it would also be very difficult to distribute new versions of the course. The materials that we develop are subject to a lot of evaluation. 42 teachers were surveyed. None of the teachers involved did not desire to continue using computer-assisted instruction. The student attitudes were very positive. 96% of the students wanted to continue using it. They found it fun, satisfying, and interesting. You can see achievement results, probability, measurement, statistics, and algebra, arithmetic, integers and rationals, coordinates and transformations. In each case, very significant. There's a system at the Xerox Corporation in California called Interlisp that adds a whole new dimension to CAI. The Interlisp D environment is a very, very well-equipped, powerful workshop in which you can put together almost anything. What we did with this system was to build an intelligent coaching system which is built on top of an arithmetic drill and practice game called How the West Was Won, which would watch what the student was doing and come in and suggest some of the complexities at times that were appropriate by comparing their, their behavior with what an expert would do in exactly the same situation. The system that you see here has a uh, collection of windows on it, and I control most of what the windows do by means of a device called a mouse, because it's very easy for people to learn how to do and avoids the necessity of them knowing how to type. How the West Was One is a linear board game. It says select here to continue, so I will hold down one of the mouse buttons over that. And when that happens, the computer generates three random numbers from its spinners, and the object of the game is that you take those three numbers and form an arithmetic expression using the operations plus, minus, times, and division. And that result of that arithmetic expression dictates how far you move along the board. Now, in order to make the game more complicated than just making large numbers, there are certain special moves. If you land in a town at the end of your turn, then you automatically advance to the next town. In addition to towns, there are also shortcuts. And there's also a rule that if you land on the same square that your opponent is on, then that's a bump and he goes back two towns. And yet most of the students who actually play it don't see all of those possibilities. They tend to lock into a strategy which is always making the best possible move, and they just continue to do that over and over again. Now behind the scenes, a computer has been developing a model of our strengths and weaknesses, and 
decided that now was an appropriate time to come in and say something based on a reasoning process which recognized that I have not in the past used division and it's going to come in and suggest a better move at this point. Would you like to see an example? And what it does is to give me an example of how I would have gotten a much better move. It then offers me a chance to take my turnover so that I can run through that and actually experience that happening. So we're striving for an environment in which the student has the freedom to do whatever they want but the machine knows some things because we've programmed it in and it's capable of using that knowledge to help the student discover some of the structure so that the student is not there alone. He actually has some guidance or tutoring.